So the notation we use for limits looks like this. The limit as x approaches a. And we use limits formally to help us analyze different kind of complicated parts of functions like holes, asymptotes. Uh, what we're going to look at are discontinuous points, so where things the graph breaks apart. And more, most importantly, when we get into the differential calculus, how we calculate instantaneous slope. So we've already done holes and asymptotes. So really all we're going to do with limits is formalize how we've dealt with holes and asymptotes. And to do that, we, we're going to look at left-hand and right-hand limits. So if we talk about a left-hand limit, that means we're approaching some value from the left. So that negative there does not indicate negative a. It means we're approaching the value of a from the left-hand side. And when we have this plus a with a plus, this does not mean positive a. It means approaching the value of a from the positive side or the right-hand side. Okay, so this allows us then to deal with these graphs that break apart okay, here and here. Okay, as it breaks apart, we have different limits coming from the right-hand side and left-hand side. So this is how we're going to deal with these discontinuous points. So if we take a look at the limits here. So the right-hand limit here, as I approach f of x equals 3 from the right-hand side, what this means is I'm coming in this direction towards x equals 3. And I can see that as I approach x equals 3, the y value is approaching this y value of negative 3. And then if I take a look at the, this one here with the negative, this means I'm approaching the same value of x, x equals 3, but now I'm approaching it from the negative side or the left side. So I'm approaching it from this side and I end up with at a different place. I end up with at x equals, oh, sorry, y equals 2. So having a left hand and right hand limit allows me to deal with these graphs that break apart like this. And we can see that this is discontinuous and it's important that we established discontinuity is very straightforward. It's if the graph breaks apart. If we, can, if we can't draw the graph without lifting our pen through that, it's discontinuous. Okay? So we have our left-hand limit equal to positive 2. So it's approaching positive, a y value of positive 2 here. From the right-hand side, it's approaching a value of negative 3. And furthermore, it, the actual value at 3 is negative 1, okay? Now, it's important that the limit does not inform us at all with what's happening at the point, okay? Those are two different things. The limit tells us where it's headed. The, it doesn't tell us anything about what's actually happening at x equals 3. Now, because this graph breaks apart, this graph is what we call discontinuous. And if a graph is discontinuous, there is no limit at that point. Okay, so this, if it's discontinuous, the limit does not exist. So what we can say then is, when we put this together, is as one side of the limit, we do have limits that exist, but if we put this together as a two-sided, back to a two-sided limit like we did before, so that indicates it's a two-sided limit, this does not exist because although it exists from the right side and exists separately from the left side, from the right and left side, they do not come to the same limit, so we say the limit does not exist. So looking at negative 3, we can look at negative 3 in a similar way. So if we approach negative 3 from the right-hand side, it looks like it's going to that point. Okay, as we approach negative 3 from the left-hand side, it's approaching the same point. So what this means then is the left-hand limit and right-hand limit are the same. That means that as a two-sided limit, it exists. But even though the two-sided limit exists, we still, and I'm going to, the two-sided limit is right here. Okay, so 
as x approaches negative 3 from both sides, that's a two-sided limit in blue, it does exist, it equals 2, which is the same as the left and right hand limits, we still have a discontinuity because if you notice the actual coordinate at x equals 2, so that, sorry, at the actual coordinate at x equals negative 3 is at y equals negative 3. So even though the limit exists going to negative 3, it's still discontinuous because there's a gap in there. Okay, and that's the basic idea of discontinuity. If there's a gap, it's discontinuous. There's now there's all different types of discontinuity that we can distinguish with limits. We're not going to do that so much in this course, but it, there are different types of discontinuities we can, which we can differentiate with limits.